Hey guys, uh, all right, so over the past week and a half, I've been doing a lot of sanding on the car, just uh, getting it ready for the mold process. And it's just been nonstop sanding all the fine lines and trying to get the, uh, the body as perfected as possible so that uh, I can lay a good mold surface down and end up with nice smooth um, mold. So I'm still on a pretty high grit of sandpaper and I have to work all the way up to um, probably you know to the 800 to 1500 grit uh, range. I'm not going to go all the way up to 2000 because uh, I don't, I don't, you don't really need that for the mold process necessarily. I'll end up polishing the molds later, ouch, which would um, give me that really mirror uh, surface that I'm looking for. So, so anyway, um, so yeah, I've been doing that for the past week and a half and, uh, and working on the dash a little bit, but ran into some issues with that and got a crack in it, which I'll show you. And I'm probably going to do like a separate video on this crack just because it, uh, it, it's happening for a certain reason. And so I want to do a video just kind of explaining why it's, it's happening and, and it gives you, you know, you guys something to avoid later on when choosing certain products and stuff. So just something I'm learning on, on uh, through the process. <coughs> uh, uh, <laughs> all this dust in here. So anyway, so here's the car. Oh, and by the way, I got a new camera. Hopefully it's working right. I'm, I was having some weird focus issues where it was like focusing just randomly, kind of strangely. So, um, so yeah, I finally got a new camera. I've tested a few and bought a few, took them back and got one that I think works good. Has wide angle lens, so that's nice. Um, it's pretty high quality and it's small and lightweight so I can hold it in my arm and and it has really good steady cam stuff, so uh, so that may help everybody not get so sick of why, while watching the videos. So uh, yeah, so that's about it as far as doing work on the car. Um, like I said, the sanding stuff is just it's crazy. So uh, that's I've always dreaded that part. I, it just wears you out just physically because I'm really hand sanding the car. I'm not trying to use a lot of power tools and. You know, just by hand sanding it with these things here. Let me show you. Flip around. Okay. So, so yeah. So I'm using this, which is kind of a, a flexible sander, and then I have some some hard flat uh, sanders that I'm using also. And then I have this, which is just an orbital uh, electric sander um, that's connected to a shot back, so that it doesn't produce too much dust. Um, yeah. So. So that's kind of what I'm using at the moment. I have some air sanders and things, but my air compressor is just so loud that it's you know disturbing everybody. And uh, I really like using the electric tools because do, they don't run out of uh, air and they are just really powerful. Like one thing about the electric tools while doing the body work is that they don't slow down. Like with the air sanders, um, you know, I'm always constantly having to adjust the the pressure that I'm applying to them or whatever uh, depending on the air pressure in the tank sometimes so if I had like a whole stream of air tanks and it wouldn't be such a, a problem over here but I just have this little single stage or I don't know maybe it's a double stage I don't know uh, air compressor and uh, and so when I use it it just it, it'll get low on air and it kicks back on and then that sander kind of slows down, stuff like that. And also the, the, the air powered ones get gummy and things like that. And you have to re-oil them and all that. And it splatters on your, on your uh, work. And I don't know, I just like electric. I like to find an electric, uh, uh, like straight line sander. I don't know, like here, I don't know. let me show you. It's in here. I don't know where it's at. It's in my... Lord, I think I have it. Where is that thing? Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> so, so I have these. These are air-powered um, sanders, and they're just, you know, they're not like super high quality or anything, but uh, they're just on a cheaper side. This one's pretty good, but uh, you know, if they had an electric version of one of these, I'd be in heaven. Uh, it would save so much time. So, if anybody knows of an electric version, I don't care if it's like $500 or something, I'll probably get it. 
So anyway, um, so yeah, so yeah, I got a new camera. I've been doing a lot of work on the car, sanding uh, the lines. It's all dusty right now and uh, working this back section and the little, uh, you know, peak area in the back and this uh, center section. I'm also doing a lot of work on the uh, snorkel holes or air vent holes on the hood. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get them prepped and ready so that I can mold and do like a partial mold of the air vents. And I have to fill in these holes and create like a, a, a covered spot here so that when I lay fiberglass in, it, it doesn't stick out. So it'll just help pull the mold off that. So essentially I'm going to make a, just a temporary partial mold of just these scoops. And then I'll have that for later use so I can reproduce the scoops real easily. And, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll come back and just fiberglass right over top of everything and close this all up. Uh, so that I can easily pull the hood out of the the main mold when I get it all made. So anyway, hope that makes sense. Covered it in other videos, so go watch the the other <laughs> the other videos. Uh, yeah, so that's basically what I've been doing with this, and just doing a lot of sanding, uh, getting the top surface done right now on the car. And then I have to hit the side uh, surfaces a lot. And the other side's pretty pretty good. I don't really have to mess with the other side too much. This side I have to rework a little bit, um, especially around this door area. And that's really about it on this side. Uh, then the rest of the uh, the sanding um, tweaking areas will be on the front and the back, and it's just going to be detailed work where I just sit on the ground and just slowly sand as the day goes by. So <laughs> uh, so over here on the dash. Um, you know, I've got these in place now as I covered in one of the other videos. I've been tweaking some of the air vents and around this area, not too much, just kind of cleaning it, trying to fill in some of the gap areas a little, uh, readjusting the height of the gauges. Um, then I came out and noticed this, this crack here, <laughs> which is pretty substantial. I mean, this is a serious crack. And after kind of trying to figure out what's going on, because it keeps cracking in this spot, uh, I finally realized that the the main issue because it's being raised as you can see there's a lip here so this part is normal and this part's been pushed up and what's going on is I filled in this is where the airbag was and I filled this whole area in with that cheap expanding foam and the the stuff that you get at like your your local hardware store like that tough stuff or whatever it's called um, or maybe it's just called stuff I don't know but it's like that yellow expanding foam and you can see in here where it's all at. So uh, what I'm going to do is go in and cut that foam out a little bit and get it to release a little so that it, it doesn't continue to press up because I think what's happening is as the temperature is getting warmer here in Texas uh, quite a bit. So like yesterday it was pretty cold and in an, at nighttime it gets cool and then at, during the daytime it gets really hot like it's getting up to the 90s now and I think that's just freaking out what's underneath the, the clay. The clay itself isn't changing. Like, there, it's not cracking anywhere else on the dash at all. Um, even this part, which this is completely, all of this is made out of clay, this whole piece. And nothing's happening. It's not shifting. It's not changing. You know, it's really stable. But what's happening here is the foam that's underneath it is continuing to expand. And that's kind of the main issue with that weather foam type stuff that you get is I think it's just always you know made to continue to expand or uh, change with the weather conditions maybe that's how it seals around windows because that's really what it's for it's more of a sealant for your home sealing in uh, you know uh, places that you have air leaks in your house stuff like that so I want to have to come back through uh, kind of weld this area in and fix these cracks, relieve uh, this area underneath from the foam and get that to settle back down because I can't have it doing that, especially when I do a mold of this because that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> uh, when you start laying fiberglass and your materials over top of this and you let it sit for 24 hours, it actually builds up quite a bit of heat. I mean, that fiberglass through its chemical you know, reactions with 
with the hardener and stuff gets really, really hot. And uh, if it generates too much heat, I don't want the foam underneath the surface to get all crazy and start distorting the mold, first of all, and start putting crack lines in, in the mold piece. So I, I need to address that now, and I'll do that uh, here soon. And I'll probably just do a little video of that part. So, so anyway, so I've been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, changed out all my lights in the, the garage to more of a daylight. I have a bunch more lights now because I've been having a hard time just lighting everything evenly. And while I'm sanding, I really need good light so that I can see the surface, uh, you know, area better and see the uh, deformations, I guess, as I sand, um, things like that. And it just helps. You know, I can kind of feel it. You know, you, if you use your hand, you can feel. Uh, that's probably the best tool. That's probably the best tool that you have is just feeling as you sand to see if you feel any ridges uh, or dips or valleys or bumps or whatever. And um, so, so yeah, that's one thing I've been doing. The, the lighting is something I'm addressing. Uh, I think I have some other lights that I'm going to order that are more of a studio light set. So I'm going to get that and use that for my uh, vlogs and for, uh, for inside here as well because this side of the car isn't as lit as well as like that side over there. And, and I, that's mainly because this light is not very far over. So, so anyway, uh, that is about the extent of all of that. And I'll keep you guys updated on that part. So, you know, I have these these new videos that I want to try to do where I'm going to start trying to showcase some other people's work and some artwork and things like that. Just try it out. It's just a kind of a new format that I want to test and, you know, see what I can do. I'm really trying to bring um, some extra light to projects like this uh, for other people. And, you know, I'm up to over, what, 3 million views now on my videos. I don't have nearly as many subscribers, so i got to fix that. But, uh, but I like to get, I like all the views, and I like to, you know, show other people what they're doing, you know, what, what else is out there that other people are doing. Uh, that's what I meant to say. And try to, try to you know, really put, put some light on some of the other work that's out there, because there's really no one talking about it, and no one sees it. And there's some really good stuff that's that's going on, and there's other people like me doing this, and even better than what I'm doing with better techniques and stuff. So I just feel like everybody needs to see it. Uh, there's just so many crappy cars coming out by the manufacturers that it's just it's insane that you know that that's happening. You got like regular Joes like me coming out with stuff that I feel is is you know better looking and has a better uh, maybe conceptual idea behind it of simplicity and things like that, you know, because there's some nice electric cars coming out, all, all this stuff. So anyway, so I'll try to do some of that video stuff later. Um, then let's see, I'll turn this around. Okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. I've been sanding so my arms can barely hold up the camera, even though this is a really tiny, tiny camera. Um, yeah, uh, that and let's see, I did a, uh, a documentary deal for uh, the Blade and uh, kind of, it's, it's kind of a strange thing. It's, it's not specifically on the Blade itself. It's more about me and crazy people like me who uh, are doing this and how their family adapts to uh, such a grandiose type project, I guess. So... Uh, so I did this documentary, went to the premiere last night, and it, it was really, really good. Uh, everybody, everybody in the theater really liked it, and it's only like 12 minutes long and, uh, and all that, so it's not like a big full featured uh, film or anything, but it's done you know, by my nephew, and it's, it's done for his college project and all that. So. Uh, I thought it was really good, and once I get the master files, I'll probably upload them uh, for your, all you guys to see, and you can kind of get an inside look on the car and me and my family and, 
and my uh, kids and stuff. So uh, it's kind of different and interesting to to put out there. So so yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's about it. Let me know what you guys think in the the comments. Um, let me know what you think of the the video quality. This is a full 1080p uh, HD you know camera and all that. So hopefully the video quality is a lot better and you'll be able to uh, see the uh, detail and my mistakes <laughs> much better so uh, so yeah let me know uh, make sure you thumbs up and like the videos uh, all that stuff so I'll see you guys later bye